Hey, how's it going? And today we're taking a quick second look at the interactive world. I got a comment about someone was saying, how could this be implemented in a game? And right now I'm still working my way through the documentation. I have the character up and running in a third person game, but I'm getting some weird shadows, some shadow artifacting, and I'm also getting a couple blueprint errors that I'm not sure about. So I'm still working those out before I do a tutorial about that. But in the meantime, I thought it'd be fun to show you something that you can do really quick and easy that's kind of fun, that's strangely gratifying and fun. One other thing I wanted to tell you is as you're exploring this plugin, if you mess things up, you get in there and you just somehow jack things up and it's not working and everything's all squirrely, what you can do is just come into the engine that you installed it on, go to installed plugins, and then just remove it and then start over, just reinstall it. Because as you're experimenting with it, it's very easy to mess something up. There's that to be aware of. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna go to the game's third person template. This does require the third person and starter content to work. So we're gonna go ahead and create this also has some C++ classes in there. So I get to certain points in the project where I kind of hit the end of the road because I only know visual scripting. And if it gets into C++, I really don't know what to do. So every time you start it, you need to enable the plugin. So I'm just gonna search for interactive world and we'll go ahead and restart it. And it's a lot of fun and there's a lot to learn in it. So. I'm real excited about it. Apparently the gentleman that released it did it as part of trying to get a job for himself in Unreal. And I would think he would be able to at some point because he certainly seems to be extremely knowledgeable. Okay, so here we go. So the plugin is enabled. The first thing I gotta do is come to load layout default. And then I'm gonna content drawer and dock that, okay and then I'm gonna hit Alt with my left mouse button. Now the first thing I wanna do before we get into this is I wanna stay on the All folder. I wanna just make this space a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna delete that wall and delete this wall and then select the ground floor mesh here, hit the space bar and then just drag this out here and make myself a much bigger arena like that, okay? And that should be maybe even bigger, you know. We can make it even bigger. I guess we can make it as big as we want to make it. Okay, so there we go. Make sure you're on the all level. And there's only three things that we need to make this work. Just three. So the first one is a material. And we're going to search for M underscore mud. And this actually is a very nice material. It doesn't tile and it has a lot of noise in it. So you could use this in any other project that you have if you're just looking for a nice mud material. So just click it and drag it onto the scene and there you see we've got this nice mud material. See what I mean? It's not tiled or anything. The next thing that we're gonna search for is the BP drawing board. So BP drawing. And there's different ones. There's These are essential blueprints you have to use depending on what your thing is. But we're gonna do mud, because I think that's really nice. So just click the blueprint and drag it onto the scene. The space bar and bring it up. Has a nice little sprite on there that says mud. So that's great. And then the only other thing we need is the BP underscore will. And this is really fun. So. There's another one of these wheels, and I have to look at it closer, but when it rolls, it leaves the Unreal Engine logo. <laughs> but this just leaves marks. But this is cool, watch. So now all I have to do is hit play. And there's the wheel over there. And I think this would be fun. I think little kids would really enjoy doing this because it's, look at this, watch. See how it leaves those marks? And then if you spin it, you can actually start making kind of really cool designs. Let me try to get ahead of it here. Like if I turn it, try to like uh, that pit maneuver kind of like cops do, you know. And you come up and you just see it's leaving these really cool marks in 
And so I could imagine that you'd have maybe different wills that would leave different marks. It's just kind of a fun thing to, to mess around with. Anyway, that's just one example of what you can do with this plugin. It's really, it's really interesting. It's interesting too because it seems to be driven a lot off of this player character interacting with it. So it's just really neat. Anyway, that's all I had for today. Take care. Have a great day. And I will talk to you next time.